for, for years to come. Thank you, Senator Kramer. Uh, Senator Rosen, please. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Chairman Reed, uh, Ranking Member Inhofe, and thank you all for your service and for being here again. We appreciate how accessible you are to this committee and others. Um, General Milley, last month I traveled to Poland and Germany as part of a bipartisan CODEL uh, led by Senator Ernst, several other members of this committee on the CODEL. We had the privilege of meeting the U.S. forces, receiving briefings from commanders on the situation in Ukraine, seeing firsthand the security assistance and training uh, NATO's providing the Ukrainians. And uh, this trip, and the horrific, horrific is too light of a word, I guess, to use, but the horrific images of the Russian war crimes we've seen since, it really underscores for me that we can and we must do more to support Ukraine, defeat Vladimir Putin and de defeat what he's doing. So President Zelensky continues to ask for greater American support to close the skies, allow Ukraine to defend itself. I do understand the arguments as to why the MiG-29 specifically might not make sense for Ukrainians' defensive battle, but is there another aircraft they could fly that could be impactful, something else that could provide close support? And, and I understand we're not in the classified setting. Um, are there other forms of lethal assistance you could talk about here that, that might uh, help Ukraine, def Ukrainians defend themselves against this brutality? The um, most effective is that which we have been providing, which is air defense systems. So the Russian Air Force uh, has not, even today, established air superiority, let alone air supremacy, which is one of the reasons why they're having great difficulty on the ground. So the air superiority mission has not been achieved. Why is that? It's because of the survival of the air defense systems, uh, both the man pads that we've been providing, stingers and the like from other NATO countries, uh, plus the longer range SAMs that have been uh, uh, provided and that they already had. Uh, so that system has denied the airspace, effective use of the airspace to the Russian military. Now that's not to say Russian air is not getting through, they are on occasion, but for the most part, they're not really very effective, the Russian Air Force. And, and that's the reason, it's because of the air defense. So, the best method right now, and, and the Ukrainians, I talk to my Ukrainian counterpart every couple of days, uh, they are very, very thankful, extraordinarily thankful, on the 60,000 anti-tank weapons, which mm -hmm. is the second system that is really effective, and, the, and the about 25,000 anti-aircraft weapon systems that have been sent by the United States and our allies and partners. So those are the two weapon systems that have proven most effective, uh, and the one for the air in particular, the best way to deny the Soviet or the Soviets, the Russians, uh, the airspace, uh, is through the air defense systems, and that's what they're using. Well, given the having losses that Russians have been, um, uh, the Russian military suffered in the Ukraine, we know they're repositioning. Like you said, they're, uh, we're, we're doing a good yeah. job. We're getting them the lethal support that they need. How do you assess their ability as they're repositioning and uh, trying to resupply, I would guess, their forces uh, and Russian ability? Their Russian ability and their attack on eastern Ukraine as they begin to reposition themselves uh, more down towards the Donbass. The, the Russians have been struggling with their logistical resupply. Fuel, ammunition, food, also medevac, etc. Uh, they've been having a very, very difficult time. Part of that is because the lines of communications that they have, the ground lines of communications, are at risk to uh, dismounted and mounted Ukrainian forces that are conducting ambushes along those lines of communication. So they've really had a difficult time with logistics. Well, and so on the other side of that, we know if they're repositioning, the Ukrainian military and ground forces there have to reposition as well. So um, looking ahead, do you think the Ukrainians have the right equipment and logistics in place to, uh, to uh, defend against this repositioning that Russia is, seems to be doing? Uh, they, they, they are asking for and they could probably use additional armor. Uh, and artillery, uh, and we're looking, we are looking around through allies and partners to get those type of weapon systems that require no training. Of course, we have armor and artillery, but it's not the kind that they are used before, and we require months of training to get them into a U.S. system. Uh, so we are looking around, uh, along with other countries in NATO, uh, to help them out in, in terms of building them up for armor and artillery. The fight down in the southeast, the terrain is different than it is in the north. Uh, it is much more open and, and lends itself to armor mechanized offensive operations on both sides. Uh, and uh, so those are the systems that they're looking for, and, and that's what people are trying to help them out with. 
Thank you. I'm, I'm going to submit my next questions for the record, but they're really important. They'll be for Secretary Austin and Under Secretary McCord. It's about housing for our junior enlisted troops. Uh, they're not able to receive their base allowance for housing. They're transitioning. Uh, the cost of housing is expensive. They're not getting reimbursed in the way they should be. We also have issues for those on um, Creech that uh, have to travel a far way to go to Las Vegas and go to work. And so I'm going to submit those for the record. I see my time is up and I look forward to speaking with you about that. Thank you, Senator Rosen. Uh, Senator Tupperville, please. Thank you very much. Thanks for being